Next, we have Francesca Barbero from the University of Turin, who will talk about plants and uh, if plants can hear their pollinators. All right, go ahead. Okay. So good morning, everyone. I'm uh, excited to present uh, the preliminary results of our Good Vibes project, which was uh, funded by the Human Frontiers Science Program and uh, aimed at um, disentangling the uh, uh, signaling, uh, the vibroacoustic signaling uh, between plants and insect. The general idea uh, of the project originated uh, from a very naive observation. Uh, every insect, while flying, is emitted uh, a vibroacoustic signal, which can be used in behavioral contests, such as mating, or, uh, um, for instance, uh, uh, mimicry, or predation, or even a social contest. Uh, but what about if uh, these uh, vibroacoustic signals also have played a role in fostering um, plant-insect interaction, such as in pollination. The buzz pollination, indeed, is a specific behavior, this one, where the insect uh, basically is shaking the anther of the flower to get the pollen released. But we are interested in this moment, uh, in this precise moment, that is the approaching, so before any contact between the insect and the plant. This is the sound of uh, uh, the best pollinators of our model plant species, which is Anterrinum litigiosum. And here, you are listening to the sound of a robber. This wasp is stealing the nectar without doing its job of transferring the pollen. So you can spot the difference between the two signals, but what about the plant? Can the plant uh, sense and discriminate uh, between these two signals and, there, and then um, react in an in, in ad adaptively uh, way. To address this question, we recorded uh, the vibroacoustic signal emitted by different uh, flower visitors of uh, our anterinum plants. Uh, we measure these signals and um, with, uh, with traditional methods, but also with convolutional neural network uh, analysis. And the model uh, performances sometimes, or in some cases, uh, uh, reached more than 90% of probability to discriminate between the sounds produced by uh, the two insect uh, species, even if congeneric. Uh, so flower visitors of Anterinum litigiosum emit species-specific vibroacoustic signal. But uh, what about the plant? Are the plants responded in a, in a different way when they uh, when a good pollinator is flying around with respect when a robber is flying around? So to achieve this goal, we perform playback experiment both in control conditions and in more natural condition using greenhouses. Uh, we assess data on different time scales within a within a day and uh, within a, a week. We use uh, different uh, sound stimuli like. Of course, the sounds produced by the pest pollinators, by robbers. We included also two controls, uh, ambient noise and uh, a pink noise. And we assess for plant responses that can increase the attraction of the best pollinators, such as variation in nectar, in volatiles, or in the plant phenology. And we also investigated the gene expression uh, in order to, to get some clues on the mechanism underlying these plant uh, responses. And we found indeed variation in the nectar sugar content in the concentration of the sugar in, uh, in nectar, but also in the volume, just when we played back the sound of the best pollinators and not when we play, played the sound of the robbers or the controls. And this finding is supported by uh, the fact that the genes that were overexpressed were also linked to sugar transportation in the plant uh, uh, physiology. We also uh, highlight some variation in the volatilome, in the volatile compounds, but still we have to identify this compound. And we also uh, found a sort of trends in the number of flowers that stay stays open longer when the, the sounds of uh, the best pollinator is played. We are at the moment assessing the flower properties uh, as a substrate for enhancing the vibroacoustic uh, propagation. And more importantly, we are about to perform behavioral choice tests with insects uh, 
uh, indeed to demonstrate if these plant responses increase, really increase uh, uh, the attraction towards the best pollinators. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, our results suggest that the insect vibroacoustic signal could have played uh, a more significant role in the interaction between plant and insect in general than previously thought, but results from behavioral tests are indeed crucial, are essential uh, to assess if these plant responses really increase the attraction towards pollinator and are therefore, uh, can be therefore uh, defined as adaptive. And uh, another important result is that the sounds produced by those insects uh, is species specific, so can be used to identify species. And so the analysis of soundscape and vibroscape has the potential to become the most sustainable method for assessing biodiversity. Uh, when we will reach the point uh, as the passive acoustic monitoring uh, is fully implemented, uh, these methods won't require any animal sacrifice as the traditional methods uh, do. And with that, I would like to thank uh, all the good, good vibes uh, uh, team, starting from the group uh, at my university. We are the entomologist, Tom's group uh, in Valencia, Spain, they are the plant physiologist, and Sebastian's group in uh, Sydney, they are the acoustic engineers. And of course, all of you for listening and the Human Frontiers uh, Science Program for funding. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We'll open it to the room for some questions. Yes, thank you. Uh, interesting talk. Uh, I just want to make sure I understand buzz pollination. From your video, it looked like uh, the bee was actually mechanically vibrating this, this, this thing. But it sounds like you're talking about doing an acoustic playback, playing acoustic sound. Yeah. Is it both? or? I mean, we are not looking at the buzz pollination. As, as a specific behavior. We are just looking at uh, the sounds produced when the insects are approaching the, the plant without any contact. So it's a completely different uh, behavior. OK, thank you. Of course, the, the sounds produced uh, uh, by approaching insects are making the flower tissue vibrating. So you have a laser drop. Yeah, problem. yeah, yeah. Thanks for, for that point of clarification. I was also curious. Do the robber, the, the robbers, do they exhibit that same behavior where they kind of fly up to the flower uh, and wait and then approach? Or is it only the true pollinators that have this kind of approaching, kind of pausing behavior before they interact with the flower? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, all the insect uh, while flapping the wings emit uh, this vibroacoustic signal. That is what we recorded. Mm -hmm. So. That maybe I was wrong in showing the bus pollination because it, it, it just had confusion. But we are not looking at this shaking stuff. So just when the, when, when the insect is approaching, before any content. So basically, uh, and this is specific for uh, just for flowers that possess uh, what is called porosidial hunters, the bus pollination. So we are looking at completely different uh, model species. Mm. That can be pollinated uh, in common ways. Just uh, the the bees entering the the, the flower and uh, so touching the the reproductive the re reproductive part of the flower and transferring. So uh, thank you. No, thanks. We will go to an online question now. All right. Our first uh, question is from Hannah Devlin. Um, for um, Dr. Barbero, do you suggest? Um, you suggest that these ob observations could be used to enhance relationships between plants and pollinators. Can you explain how this might help on farms, for example? Yes, this this will be a you know a follow up uh, stuff uh, before we can we can use our results for uh, for the monitoring, but. I'm pretty sure that uh, in the future we can also use uh, these sounds just to to increase. Uh, for instance, the concentration uh, of nectar in order to attract the best pollinators, even in uh, crops uh, stuff. So, j in order to to enhance uh, their pollination without using any uh, any chemical or uh, any other stuff, uh, maybe to avoid uh, the bad uh, insect uh, to to come to, to flowers and stuff like that. And that was actually a second part of the question. So, this. Uh, 
this wouldn't um, lead to robbers grabbing more of the nectar. Um, she's, they're just wondering how, the, you know, what the, some ideas about improving the natural adaptation. Yeah, uh, I think that one stuff that we um, we, we try to assess it in our uh, in uh, in our study with respect to to others is that we passed a lot of time in the field looking for the behavior of uh, of the insect and for this model uh, plant here we have a, a sort of a stronger connection with these super good pollinators that is flying around that is using the plant also as a territorial part in order to to to, to encounter the female that are uh, that are uh, um, pollinating this uh, th this plant, and they are um, mostly present in a, a limited part of the day. So, and these plants' responses are also super quick, so they can be adjusted according to the part of, or of the day when the good pollinators are present in order not to waste the resources uh, and uh, give the resources, for instance, to robbers or stuff like that. Because there's a, a sort of you know competition between uh, the um, the flower visitors, and so it would be adaptive if the plant just uh, respond in the, the small time window where the good pollinators are present. Thank you so much. Uh, we have two more yeah. online questions. Uh, one is from Jessica Sanserin. Um, did the size or age of each plant play a factor in how the plants in this study responded? We take into account that. That's why we also have a time scale, a longer time scale within, uh, within a week. But uh, we also assess the baseline before uh, any playbook experiment and, st and stuff. So we can compare with the baseline. Very good. And last question is from Avery Thompson. Avery asks, do you have any idea how the plants are listening to these sounds? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there, is, uh, there is no uh, um, you know, super evidence about that, but uh, there are clues about the fact that uh, there are mechanoreceptors uh, like trichomes uh, or other mechanoreceptors that are uh, basically uh, mm, trigger a cascade signal uh, that could be mediated also by calcium release uh, or by membrane potassium variation of the of the cells. But there are there are because plants do not have any brain, but they can sense uh, the environment and respond accordingly. With otherwise, there the won't be any plants anymore. But uh, okay, and this is a way uh, how they can uh, they can sense the vibroacoustic signal. Great, thank you so much.